there are few things better than the discovery of a new great piece of art. Finding those hidden gems that at one point escaped your knowledge but now sit comfortably upon your favourites. And normally the best of the bunch are hidden in obscurity. Works that stray from the norm usually don't pick up much of a viewership. It's natural that they'll be missed by the masses. So in this video I'm going to be recommending 10 criminally underappreciated anime, most of which I've never mentioned in my videos before, so hopefully you can discover a few hidden gems. Zega Pain is probably the most underappreciated anime series I've ever seen. I rarely hear the mention of the series despite having one of the most impressive and innovative narratives in the medium. Its lack of popularity is a testament to the success of the story. Without giving away too much about the series, it strives to turn all your expectations and judgments on their head. Achieved by doing, well, you'll have to watch the series to find that out. It takes what you would normally expect from a story and flies in the opposite direction, not only telling a fascinating and unique narrative, but actively engaging the viewer to think and question what they're watching. I certainly felt like I was a part of Zega Pain rather than just an observer. I felt genuinely affected, a kind of existential narrative. Yugi Mono is possibly the best aesthetic experience in anime, and I mean that in both a narrative and a visual sense. Riding the wave of the glorious philosophical content of the Sengoku period, Kyogi Mono delves deep into its themes of imperfection while beautifully capturing the atmosphere of its time. And on top of its many thematic layers lies a fantastic sprawling narrative involving a plethora of expertly written and perfectly developed characters. With gorgeous consideration for its own aesthetic and poetically illustrative narrative, Yogi Mono is one of the most underappreciated series of the decade. Angel's Egg is a piece that really shouldn't exist. Back in the early 80s, Mamoru Oshii was brought in to make a loop in the third movie. Unfortunately, the production failed, and not wanting to waste what had been started, Oshii was left to finish the project. Thus, Angel's Egg was created. A piece that delved deeper into the abstract than any anime had done before. So much so that people are still baffled by its obscurity today. Brushed aside by many who believe its comprehension just to be unreachable. It's filled with fantastically evocative imagery, symbolising beautifully the simple story it's telling. The narrative is about belief and faith. Oshi utilises his surreal and interpretive storytelling style to mirror this narrative theme. You take the role of the main character as you, yourself, toy with your own interpretation of the movie. It forces you to ponder your own experience and ask questions. It's an incredibly fascinating and evocative piece. Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere is, at first look, and even at first watch, a complicated experience, of which its qualities are buried under a landscape of busyness. Its myriad of genres are wrapped in its crazy sci-fi fantasy aesthetic. Everything is exaggerated into the absurd, but it balances that absurdity to a degree that introduces harmony within its elements. The comedy works with the adventure that helps rationalise the action, all while maintaining a meaningful romance. The sci-fi and fantasy elements are integrated nicely without feeling too convoluted or overcomplicated. Definitely worth a watch for fans of any genre. War in the Pocket is a real gem in the vast Gundam landscape. Unlike many of the franchise's other instalments, it's modest in both its size and its focus, but certainly not its impact. The short series approaches its viewer as a more simple piece, which pays off when the series evolves its complexity in the future episodes. Focusing on smaller aspects of the world, War in the Pocket allows itself to tackle very real issues. Watching the effects of war on ordinary, sometimes naive people can be just as, if not more effective than focusing on the soldiers themselves. We can really connect to the situation as it's one similar to our position as a viewer. The use of subtle but effective storytelling is an achievement hard to accomplish, but glorious in its effects. Deno Coil is a prime example of accomplished imagery, story progression and theme implementation. It tells a beautiful story, simple but bearing complex fruit. I found the story's ability to show so little get expressed so much absolutely captivating, allowing the viewer time to ponder, letting their experience blossom. This placid style of storytelling also allows the seamless integration of the philosophical and topical sci-fi themes, explored in engaging fashion as the series progresses. Terra E shares a common aesthetic with many other space operas. It's quite easy to brush off immediately, but the series conquers so many of its thematic opponents throughout its 24 episode duration. Adopted from a classic 80s space opera manga, it drinks from the same pond as a multitude of the medium's greats. With an abundance of ambition and scope, Terra E sets itself up beyond what one would expect. But with impressive handling of its diverse and conflicting themes, it wraps its world in lore and immersion, creating a series full of adventure and depth. Kaiji is a thrilling psychological series, filled with tension and absurdity. 
Unlike many sports and game shows, Kaiji is less about the actual game they're playing, and more around the actions and consequences of that game, seeing how human psychology acts at its most strained. The reactions and behaviour of Kaiji's characters are remarkably believable, although pushed well past the realm of our own experience. I think this is where the series really flourishes. The level of immersion for such ludicrousy is entertainment at its best. Pushed into obscurity by Abby's other works, Nye Under 7 gets very little recognition. Missing many of the genres Abby normally injects into his work, it's not as smooth a transition for fans to make. Being more of a comedy slice of life, you wouldn't expect it to be much more than a testing ground for Abby's future pieces, but Nye Under 7 is actually a very nice, self-contained series. Just imagine Abby's bizarre philosophical style looked at through a comedic lens. It doesn't set its bars too high, but has a very unique and entertaining approach to the comedy genre. And it's not void of the thought-provoking content we're used to. It carries and subtly explores its themes throughout the show, definitely one that deserves more credit than it currently receives. House of Five Leaves is a fascinating piece that, like Hyogi Mono, calls upon a pastime to help tell its story in a unique fashion. Using the samurai as its subject, it focuses not on the violence, but the morals and psychology of its time. It's a very quiet series, studying on a small group of characters and relying on subtle actions to tell their story. It does so gorgeously, attaching you to the characters without being too intrusive. I once again loved how it captured the feel of the era, showing believable aspects of its society and certain individuals within. It's very effective and beautifully moulds together. So there's 10 underappreciated anime for you to watch, hopefully you found something new that you can check out. And as is the nature of the obscure, I'm sure you have a number of anime that I've not mentioned, so be sure to post them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help the channel out by clicking the like button and sharing it around. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Cheers.